as they sit next door and plot against me. You know. Yeah. Plotting against me, what tactics to use or whatever. I can tell in the voices and tone. I can't tell people's tones and what they mean face to face. But this has gotten me to no tones. And that's what they're doing. That's exactly what they're doing. I don't know if they're planning psyops or whatever they're planning. I just expect to be broadcast and fucking filled with radiation and be in pain. Like usual. But you know what? Kevin says, Kevin's got a whole family um, of neighbors. But uh, they're pretty sick. You know, Kevin, targeted individual. But, um, these neighbors I never expected. The neighbors that I've always lived next door to. Not always, but 16 years. Because, you know, I thought they were all right. But then everybody's needing bigger bread. And everybody's doing more for it. And caring about their values and what they believe in less. You know, I'd be happy if I just had uh, rent money and food stamps and had enough money for my bills and I, and I ate well and I had toilet paper and stuff like that. You know, I'd give up this. But these packs are $2.50. And sometimes a pack will last me three days. Sometimes I'll need two packs in a day. It depends. It really depends on what I'm going through. But I smoked as a child, you know, before I was even a teenager. And my father bought me cigarettes. Bought me cartons of cigarettes every time I needed them, whether I lived there or not. So, and I've only, besides being in a few places that I couldn't smoke, um, you know, I got out of the system before the no smoking law. But as a juvenile, you know, there were a few places that I couldn't smoke, but, you know, I learned to get them in. I learned not only to be on crew, to end up with an office job so I can buzz myself in and out. <laughs> because I didn't want to cook. And I wasn't trying to AWOL because I liked it there. You know, they, they're they too easy on the kids in camp now. And they baby them. <laughs> We did hard, manly, manly work. <laughs> but um, it made you feel good at the end of the day. And tired. But, you know, they took that away from the kids. And it was really good for us. You know, getting up early in the morning, exercising, you know, going to school a couple days a week. And then going and <laughs> concrete. Fires, building, uh, city of Laverne, freaking <laughs> making some mint. But um, even though I was a crew chief at one time, not for very long, I always used to get in trouble. We'd be on a mountain, and I'd always have to gra grab um, Bobby McLeod and make a road. Okay. It takes forever just to just to make a road as long as my arm, you know, it takes forever. So I was off by myself a lot. <laughs> but um, I forgot what I was talking about. Oh, domestic terrorism, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to put these headphones in my ear, but I don't have a working phone. It's very inconvenient not to have a phone. You gotta stay. You gotta stay. If you want Wi-Fi, sometimes it'll take like, you know, a few hours and shit. I have a county phone. 
and I've been tethering it to these, <laughs> you know, tethering it. You know, and everybody's always told me move or, you know, come over here in San Diego. Hey, don't leave TJ. You know what? It doesn't matter where you go. It's like, you know how like a doctor file and stuff, you get a new doctor, the file goes with you. You know, whether, you know, yeah, the file goes with you. Well, I feel... You know, other people have said they've moved and they just, they got them. I feel like this shit, you know, <laughs> they red flag me and shit. And, and if I go anywhere, that, you know, that's just going to follow me with me, just like the, the doctor's file. You know, when you go to a different doctor, I'll just have new ones. And, you know, might even have a few different tactics and techniques and kinds of ways they harass me because they've already tested me. They keep testing me once in a while too for noise harassment or color harassment or vehicle harassment. Yeah, I see them there, you know, but does it bother me? No. I just put in my headphones and I sing going down the street, you know, try to shut it off. But you know what? It doesn't shut off sometimes. You know, you can hear them through your headphones. And also, you know, they use that shit to fucking, um, get in the background of shit. You know, even your music. But, you know, sometimes I, you know, but other times, you know what, I, I try to just concentrate on the simplistic of things, and the simpleness of things, because I like seeing simplistic and things I've been listening to since I've been 12 or whenever. In other words, sometimes I just don't even pretend that I r realize shit, you know? You know how many years I pretended that I, <laughs> that I never noticed that um, ele a whole electrical, um, a, a whole electrical plug thing, the things that you plug shit in, that it was missing? And it disappeared. Yeah. I noticed. A whole electrical outlet disappeared. <laughs> it was in a different kind of place. It was behind the bathroom door on the right hand side. Like above the molding. You know, the molding on the, you know, the bottom of the, you know, between the floor and the, the, the wall down there. Yeah, I had a whole electrical, you know, thing to plug shit in. Yeah, I had no others like that. And then I had two other ones that worked. That one disappeared completely. You know? Never to be seen again. Just like the cable on my wall. <laughs> Peace out. We'll see what happens. I'll keep you. <laughs> Up on, up to date.